Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back. We're, once again, we're here with Manny Pacheco. And um, what shall we talk about today? Manny? Yes. How about How about one of my favorites, all-time subjects, war films? But not, mm. not just war films. It's been... Uh, that from the beginning of movies, there has been war films. Right. Not just war films, but I'll call them the humanity of war. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it's, they focus on the human experience. Now, some of them are anti-war films. You know, they're clearly trying to tell you this war is wrong and people are suffering. But there are others where they are not necessarily trying to give you an anti-war message, but of course they're depicting that human experience, which is, you know, anybody in war will tell you, it ain't good. Mm. Um, right. So of course it has a certain anti-war uh, flavor to it. Right. But, uh, but the, 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 the war movies that focus on human experience, and, and I think what brings this to mind is a, a movie, um, it was only last year, I think, or two years ago, uh, two guys that are are sent through the First World War lines to stop a, to stop an attack. Yeah, 1917, right, mm -hmm. right. Thank you, 1917. Right, right. Uh, a real personal story. Right. Uh, but set within the context of the trench warfare. Well, if you're going to pick a movie, and it, it, it doesn't have really an ounce of battle scenes, but it's clearly a war picture with the theme of humanity as its subject, the best years of our lives, right. it doesn't get better than that film. The coming home of veterans from from uh, from their, their battle, all of them with different experiences. Harold Russell had lost his, his arms and his hands. Uh, Dana Andrews, of course, suffering from a PTSD. And of course, uh, Frederick March trying to uh, re-establish his place in his family, and it's it's a really honest examination on the humanity of the friendship between the soldiers themselves, and their reintegration into uh, society after uh, what can be only deemed as 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 a war experience. So, yeah. and since you went away is another great example where the women back home are waiting for their soldiers, their husbands, their sons, uh, Claudette Colbert, Shirley Temple, uh, Lionel Barrymore, uh, Monty Woolley. I mean, just a great, great film about the humanity of the of the individuals who who, who fight in war. And one more that comes to mind, just off the top of my head, regarding World War II, is the Adventures of G.I. Joe, that great William Wellman classic. Uh, that tells the story of the the first really popular World War II embedded soldier, Ernie Pyle, uh, a, a, a journalist of the first degree who didn't want to tell about the pageantry of war. He didn't want to talk about Patton or MacArthur or Eisenhower. He wanted to talk about those frontline boys that he affectionately called the G.I. Joes. So the story of G.I. Joe is the, is the tribute to this great, simple storyteller in, in, in uh, Ernie Pyle, who incidentally had a chance to see a rough cut of, of, of the film itself before it, it premiered, uh, was able to see the end of the European campaign, uh, came home for a bit, then watched a little bit of this the, the rushes of this film, and then went off to, uh, to his doom uh, in the Pacific, where he, where he lost his life at the tender age of 43, uh, and he basically died almost on the day the film itself premiered. A poignant story, and if there's anybody who could talk about the humanity of the soldiers who fight war, it was the great, iconic Ernie Pyle. And the fact that there was a movie made while he was still alive in his honor is a tribute and a credit to the, to the work of William Wellman. Well, you know, it's not yeah. so much a, a forgotten Hollywood because as we get to World War II and beyond, that's a little bit in many ways on the on the on the uh, gray edge of of forgotten but uh, perhaps uh, as long as we're talking about war movies with humanity uh, uh, there's a I forgot the name of it it, it was uh, I think with with Matthew uh, Modine who played a conscientious 
objector who wanted to go, wouldn't carry a rifle, but would be a medic. And he won, mm -hmm. a, his, I think, the only conscientious objector who ever won the Medal of Honor. Do you remember? Well, yeah, it wasn't Matthew Modine. I, 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 the name escapes me, but boy, it was, that was about four or five years ago. That right. was where he, where he brings down all this, this, the, the soldiers. Correct. Yes. From uh, uh, down a cliff. Down, down a cliff. Oh my yeah. gosh, what a great film that was! I, I uh, gosh, and, and you know the, the name is right on the tip of my tongue. I know I'll remember. Yeah. Uh, what a terrific film that was! And uh, yes. the first half of the film is kind of very, it very much like Sergeant York. Uh, you know, the very first part of the film is mm -hmm. he, him trying to get through the idea that that war is not necessary to the point where he gets to the to the war itself and he feels that he has a part to play that actually is going to save lives. And so, yeah, you know, I, 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 I get what you're saying. Boy, that was a, that was sure a great film. As a matter of fact, I wish I could remember. I'm sure that our uh, our celebrating act two followers will be will be typing up that it's this it's this <laughs> yeah well i hope they do yeah right. you know manny the the idea of following um an individual or uh, you know t trying to tell a personal story within the big pageantry of you know battles or wars or whatever i, I think that's kind of a standard thing it's just that some filmmakers concentrate really on the the battle uh yes. more than they do the the char the individual characters, um, I, I think of D Day and uh, Battle of the Bulge and a bunch of other Pearl big Harbor. battle movies, right. big battle movies. They well, all had good Harbor, characters yeah. in them, you know, whether it was a little guy or the general or whatever. But that's not what you remember. You remember the pageantry. You remember the panorama view of guns going off and people well, that, dying. And... You know, that changed later. I mean, obviously, other wars after World War II were not as popular. And, of course, the current wars are not fought really on a battlefield, per se. A lot of it is, you know, uh, is now, I mean, uh, generated by uh, by electronics and, and the the Internet and all that. I mean, all of the all of the, the digital tools that we right. have in our, in our toolkit. Um, so, I mean, war itself has changed. So, so you know, the war movie is going to traditionally then change at that point. I think it began to really change. I mean, and, and ironically, about about a situation that happened in World War One with Kirk Douglas's Paths of Glory with uh, with uh, Kirk and and uh, Adolf Manju. Yes. What a, what a great film! It's 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 it can be characterized as an anti-war film, but it really is a film about humanity and and how one individual is going to do everything they can to uh, protect their soldiers and the other trying to fall, follow the protocol of the military. And it's something that, of course, they're going to butt heads over and uh, there's going to be winners and there's going to be losers. And in many ways, uh, Kirk Douglas would later say that Paths of Glory wa was his favorite film that he ever did, not Spartacus. Uh, not the bad and the beautiful, not seven days in May, but actually paths of glory. So that's a testament to the writing, the strong writing about the humanity of war. And and Kirk Douglas knew that. I mean, he he was very savvy in that way, and which is why we all, all three of us, just absolutely adore Kirk Douglas for for, for a variety of reasons. You bet. Oh, by the way, Hacksaw Ridge. It was that's Hacksaw. it. Hacksaw Ridge. Oh my gosh, one of us did come up with it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And, Thank you. Great it was a Modine, but I don't know who it was, but it no, was a Modine. It was, it You're was right. Definitely Hacksaw Ridge. Yeah. What a yeah. great film. Good. I, you know what? I think our our viewers would be remiss if we didn't come up with that title. We were, I'm sorry. We I, I'm couple, sorry that your historian didn't. There could have been <laughs> there could have been some real mental ag anguish, uh, yeah. uh, for people who just really. So I'm glad we were able to provide that. Anyway. So there let's go on with other... a little bit more humanity, but some older films, like uh, uh, All's Quiet on the Western Front, that wasn't, you know, what, that didn't really, it just talked about the futility of war because it went out so long well, and killed so many that's, people. That's so. right. I mean, if you look at Wings, I mean, that's true. That, 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 again, another William Wellman classic. He was, mm. a, he was a fighter pilot in World War I, but it really follows two soldiers who became friends, and one of them lives and one of them dies, and the death scene is one of the great scenes of early Hollywood, um, as as it was described in a documentary about Wellman, 
that this death scene included a kiss between the two on the lips, but it wasn't a kiss of love per se. It was a kiss of male uh, kinsmanship as one says goodbye to another because uh, because he's about to die. And and it, it, it was so tender, that moment, and so striking. That one moment might have garnered the picture of the Academy Award just by itself. That That's how, how powerful that 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 instance of humanity was. And it's something that hadn't been shown before in film. So if you want to talk about how early Hollywood did this, uh, here, a, a, a man who was very much ingrained in the whole war experience, loved telling his stories of fighting in, in planes and the battle and everything else, but he still, you know, managed to find that that one piece of humanity between two friends in the middle of war. It's a uh, it's it's a tremendous moment. It's a it's a great category uh, because there are so many war films, uh, to, but it's a great category because. Um, you can hone in on so many different aspects of a, quote, war film. Uh, so you can discuss this for days and days and days. Let's. No. <laughs> so, uh, I'm, no okay, let's take a break and go back to rom-coms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoyed them. Well, I, you know, I appreciate the idea that we can remember our soldiers, our military in a human way. Let's let's not forget that uh, that that it, it it it's people it's it's individuals who who fight in wars and then pay the price uh, and are forgotten. That's right. I mean, art art of course is one of ours that we always salute when we can, and we're very very fortunate to have a member of of, of our military among the three of us. So that's always a good thing. Good. Well, we'll we will we'll always remember our military. Yeah. So with that, I think it's fair to say we'll talk about more war films sometime at a later date. Manny, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much, guys. T take care. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.